In the top stories, more help promised for upset White Hill residents. Two Barbadians to be honoured by the Queen and Australia continue to dominate West Indies. Welcome to Nation News for Friday, December 11, 2015. I'm Natasha Beckles. A day after residents of landside prone White Hill St. Andrew complained that they felt forgotten by government, Minister of Housing Dennis Kelman has been defending the state. The main access road to the area became impassable to vehicles just over a year ago after heavy rains, and government promised that help was on the way. About five families were relocated, but some of the houses are slipping away. Trees are leaning dangerously, and residents believe it is only a matter of time before one of them is injured. However, Mr. Kelman says another five critical cases have been identified for assistance, but the issue was one of financing. Nation News visited the rural community on Thursday and spoke to some of the residents. Why the people of White Hill, especially the people that life is in danger, is threatening right now? Why hasn't they been helped? Are they going to wait till the house falls out and kill one of them? They got little children, they got two little children that live in that house. They four living there. Why hasn't they been helped? What is the problem? They're going to wait till somebody dead to come and say they're sorry? The people in White Hill was crying out for too long. Mm -hmm. It's time that somebody come to the assistance of the people in White Hill. These people suffering. It was in the media was highlighted on CBC. It was highlighted in every media house. I all it know these people still suffering and it's not fair. Look at that house. Little children living there. They don't show when it, when it rainfall. Nobody then can't sleep because they don't know what's gonna happen. Then there's gotta be trotted out there and be saying and being at people. Why hasn't these people been helped? The house is the, the road drop and cause the road drop the house is going back all the time pushing back pushing back and all it in the house the top of the house there open up and they don't be see they don't see safe in there and they got no need to know the pipe right from it the pipe pushing the going line going back the pipe bursting the pipe bursting all the time at the back by me all the coconut tree drop in my house soon going to so i would like to move I don't know what happened, but why it wasn't taking so long? You see the condition, the road, the shuttle don't really work every day. Mm -hmm. Suppose an emergency happened or what can happen, we can die. It should now be easier for members of the public to do business with government. The data processing department revealed a redesigned online portal on Friday, and Director Eustace Russell said the upgraded system should improve the user experience for the government's easy pay service. Barbadians can currently make national insurance, land tax, and municipal solid waste tax payments through the system. Mr. Russell said the department will be expanding the portal to make information more accessible to the public. Independent sugar farmers are predicting a bleak 2016 crop. Chairman of the Barbados Sugar Industries Limited, Patrick Bethel, says farmers planted more cane this year, but they may not be able to reap them due to drought conditions. Speaking following the group's annual general meeting on Thursday, Mr. Bethel said farmers were also concerned about outstanding monies owed to them by government. Two Barbadians are among 60 young people from across the Commonwealth who will receive the Queen's Young Leaders Awards. They are 25-year-old Shamel Rice and 21-year-old Farhana Bulbulia. Mrs. Rice is the founder of Jabez House, which provides vocational training and entrepreneurial opportunities for female sex workers. Ms. Bulbulia is the founder of the Barbados Association of Muslim Ladies, which seeks to overcome cultural barriers in accessing education and employment by girls. The awards will be presented by Queen Elizabeth II next year. Governor General Sir Elliot Belgrave brought some cheer to the residents of the geriatric hospital on Thursday. Many of the elderly people seemed happy to greet the head of state during his annual Christmas visit. This followed Thursday's visit to the children's ward of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. In sport, Australia are firmly in control at the end of the second day of the first test against West Indies. The host declared on 583 for four at lunch in Hobart and they drove home their advantage in the final two sessions to reduce West Indies to 207 for six at Stumps. Darren Bravo is not out on 94, while Kimar Roach has score far made 31. Earlier, Adam Voges and Sean Marsh combined for 449 runs, the sixth highest partnership in test cricket history. Barbados are through to Saturday's boys' semi-finals of the Regional Junior Volleyball Championships. 
following a 25-19, 25-13, 26-24 victory over Martinique on Thursday night. Meanwhile, the girls defeated arch-rivals Trinidad and Tobago 25-19, 17-25, 25-21, 25-20 in their first game of the tournament. They will take on Martinique tonight at the Garfield Sober Sports Complex. And finally, Michael Leite is so proud of his native Cornwall, England, that he has his arm tattooed with its landmarks. Mr. Leite said he underwent more than 28 hours of ink work so his skin would feature some of the top attractions in the county. The carpenter told the media people have tattoos to mark an important date or memory of someone and he decided on a design that was close to his heart. And that's Nation News for Friday. For more news, log on to nationnews.com as well as YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Remember to pick up your papers over the weekend or subscribe to our e-paper and look out for the weekend buzz a little later. Thank you so much for joining us.